I actually have three college degrees, two in chemistry, one in physics. And a lot of people will say to me, you're so smart. And I don't say I'm not smart, I'm just too stupid to stop learning. All right, you should always keep learning. That's why I've now learned robotics on the fun, on the side for fun. Now, there's a lot of things that affect your robot and whether you win or lose or, and how it performs. So what is mass? Nope, that's volume. Nope, that's weight. How much matter is in it? That's a chemistry definition. It's a measure of how much an object resists changes in its motion. Right? So, I have a bowling ball on the floor and a classic red rubber dodgeball on the floor. Right? Which one has more mass? The bowling ball, right? When I kick the dodgeball, it'll go fly and bounce off that wall, right? When I kick the bowling ball, the bowling ball will move, just not as easily as in a well. I know how to kick it up here. Now, what is velocity? It's similar to something you know, but a little bit different. So what's speed? What, was it, what does that mean? It's how much distance it covers in a unit of time, right? In your car, it's miles per hour. In physics, we talk meters per second, right? Or feet per second, right? In physics, we focus on meters and seconds. Velocity is speed with direction. Right now I'm doing two meters per second forward or in the positive direction. Now I'm doing two meters per second in the negative direction. Wait, but I'm still going forward, right? Direction is a lot like a number line, right? Number line, anything that way is positive, anything that way is negative. So if I'm moving that way, I've got a negative velocity. If I'm moving that way, I've got a positive velocity. Okay, so velocity is just speed with direction. Now, force. What's a force? Ow. Not something created by many chlorines. Oh, uh, I was gonna say how much something pushes another thing. Pushes or? Shoves. Pull. Pulls. 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 A force is a push or pull. Now, there are contact forces, like me, my fingers apply to force to this, uh, what are this thing, bookend here, right? It's fine. Now, there's another force while I'm experiencing right now. Gravity. gravity. I'm not a huge fan of gravity. It's a real downer. I am. Uh, you shouldn't be if without gravity you float off into space and stuff and you die. <laughs> no, I would not float away. Well, I'd I would. Yeah, if you have a rock, just stay here. Because I have inertia. Now, so force is anything that causes a push or pull. So when the two robots hit each other, they, they push and pull on each other. All right, bring it up. Now, what's another force that's very important to our robots? It kind of rubs me the wrong way. Friction, right? Friction, all right, all right, give it up, please. Friction is a force between two rubbing surfaces, right? Now. How about your face in cement? Is there a lot of friction there? Yeah. Yes. How about your face in ice? Oh, no. Not as much friction, right? Um, you know what it's friction? Nope. Well, kind of. It is friction. But the warmth is your friction is doing work on your hands, and work is energy and transfer. So that's the heat there. But that's because of the work being done by friction on your arms. And that causes the heat. Now, when you study physics in high school, you learn this stuff in depth. The big thing is when you study science, we have to use words very precisely and accurately. We can't use them fluffy and fuzzily. Like we talk in everyday language, we use a lot of words very loosely, right? In science, you must talk about them very precisely or particularly. Now, 
What do these wheels do? They rotate or they turn. And the ability to cause turning is called torque. So torque is kind of like a force. It's, it's the ability to cause rotation, all right? Now, um, who here has a bicycle? Who here has a tricycle? <laughs> all right, Kyle. I'm small enough. All right. Now, on your bicycle, what do you have connecting the front wheel, the, 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 the paddles to the back wheel? A chain. What's that chain attached to? Gears. Gears. So, if you're trying to go up a hill, do you change your gears? Because yep. you change your torque. You need a lot of torque to get you up that hill, right? You need to turn the speed of your pedaling into lots of torque at the back wheel. Now, if you're going, if you want to go fast, you want to turn your torque at your pedals into speed at the back wheel. So you're changing the torque ratios of the gears. Now, on our robots here, we have fixed torque, right? Now, inside the motor housing is some gears attached to the motor. The real motor is here. There's a bunch of gears here. Now, but if you were doing your own robot for a competition, you might play with a gearing ratio to change the torque of your wheels, right? You might go very slow, but you've got good friction between your wheel and the table and lots of torque. So it's really hard for the opponent to push you around and you've got the torque to push them. Now, what's power? Nope, no, nope. all right, so power is either work over time or energy used over time. Yeah. All right? But it's energy or work divided by time. All right? Work is energy being trans transfers energy, and power is, you know, energy or work over time. All right? Now, um, how did we use power in um, with these robots? Power. Like when you how much um, speed the speed, speed, right? High power allowed our robot to do more work. In other words, go faster over the same amount of time, right? It could move further distance, right? Now these are this is a light, fluffy intro to physics. We could write a Hugh Tonkin book on it if we wanted to. And though I've never heard I've heard ducks honk or geese honk. All right, now, so we've got mass, mass is m, v is velocity, and p is linear momentum, all right? Now, um, momentum is defined simply as mass times velocity. What happens when things collide? What happens with momentum? Gets transferred, right? Easiest way to think about it is if you ever played billiards or pool, when that cue ball hits the eight ball, dead on, what's the cue ball do? It stops. And then the eight ball continues on at the same speed the cue ball had. Also like one of my favorite winter sports to watch, curling. No, curling. <laughs> curling is awesome because it's physics. Now, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Acceleration is how quickly your speed changes, right? So that bowling ball has a lot of mass, and I can only apply the same force to the bowling ball or the dodgeball. So when I kick the bowling ball, it has a huge mass, very little, so it has very little acceleration. The dodgeball, yeah. Well, that's friction. We're not talking about friction right now. No, friction doesn't matter right now. Um, but when I kick the dodgeball, it has very little mass, so it experiences a huge acceleration and goes very fast off of my foot. Now, friction is another force. So now I have to think about two forces acting on the ball. My foot and friction, right? So like, if I go and kick that, if I go and push on that table right now, there's a lot of friction between the table and the carpeting, right? Now, if I have nice, 
cleats on so I don't slide and I push that table on ice, will it move easy? Yeah. Or even on wheels where there's little things. So now, how do we affect this with our robots? Well, remember, we're not talking about our robots today, but if you want to improve a robot, what could I do to this robot to make it harder to move? Put treads on it. Put treads on it, so I'm changing friction then, right? Possibly. What else could I do? Well, not weights, masses. Okay, same idea, but we're going to use the word mass versus weight, right? What's in between mass and weight? It's resistance to movement. How do I get my weight? What does weight depend on? Weight depends on gravity. Nope, weight, no weights. Remember, that's a, that's, a, that's a gym word. My weight is how hard the gravity due to the earth is pulling me down, all right? Without, without gravity, I have no weight. I mean the actual weight. Yeah, like not stick it on the robot. No, weight is not mass. No. Can I have no like, weight but still have mass? Like the little weight thing. Yeah, we don't, but that's the wrong word. <laughs> that's, that's common usage using something incorrectly or, or not precisely. No, we mean like things like that. Yeah. In, in physics, we call those masses. In physics, we call them masses. I'm adding mass to the robot, not weight. You changed the robot. Nope. They're, they're masses in physics. In physics. <laughs> Right? Remember, I said we have to change precise physics wording. No, that was okay, that works. <laughs> but I'm more concerned about their mass and their weight. So I might add some batteries to this, some coins, some whatever, things that have mass to make it harder to move this robot just like it's harder to kick a bowling ball. Now, can I have zero weight but still have mass? Where am I? Space. I'm in space. I've, I've, been, I've gotten away from the gravitational influence of the Earth, right? Where I am weightless. All right. Now there's also center of gravity. Let's say I put. I, let's say I, I put all my masses back here, so that there's a lot of weight back here due to gravity pulling it down. What could the robot most likely do? It could flip up like this, right? I really want that mass right over the center of gravity of the robot, right over the wheels, right? Also, if it's back here, the wheels may not, have, they may not be pushed against the table as hard, so friction is less, all right? So your mass, your center of gravity, center of mass, should be near the center, right? Now, these, of course, is if you're building your own robot. Now, quick question for you, side trip here. Where in the world am I? If I travel three miles south, three miles east, and three miles north, and I end up back in the same spot. <gasps> nope. Anywhere. Nope. Nope. I'm in the exact same spot in the world. I went south, east, and north. I rank right back, right in the same spot. Arctic? Nope. Huh? <laughs> Arctic? Arctic what? Coast. Where? That You're on the right idea, Ariane. Right to the right. What part of the Arctic? Wait, south. South Pole? North Pole? North Pole! I said south! Right? Because when I'm at the North Pole, there's only one direction I can travel from there, and that's south. <laughs> I can't unless, travel? Unless, unless you float up. Oh, all right, all right. We're, we're talking about All right. Good catch. All right. So, now, remember, momentum is transferred in collisions, and when our two robots hit each other, we have a collision. So if I'm going very fast, a robot has a lot of momentum, so when it hits the other robot, it might cause the other robot to move quickly off the table. More momentum, it requires a larger force to, to, change, to stop it. So obviously we're going to increase the momentum of our robots by playing with the velocity. Because today we can't change with the, um, the mass. I can also change momentum by changing mass. Force. Now, um, for us, we've got the torque of the wheel, which depends on the radius of the wheel and the strength of the motor. 
Um, the torque is force times radius. And that force is actually the friction between the wheel and the, and the table, right? Um, you can increase the torque by using bigger wheels. Now, the way that works is, who's here ever had um, watched someone change the tire on a car when it got a flat? What happens if you can't get the nuts off? What do they do? They either step on it to apply more force, or they put a pipe on the end of the wrench yeah. called the cheater bar to apply more torque. <laughs> and then um, power. Uh, we increase our torque by motor power. So, one of the big things here is make sure your batteries are full. So you start competing. Have one battery to practice with, one battery to compete with. Also, now the EV3s take about a half a minute to start up and shut down, but you may want to turn your robot on and off to save power. You can also play with gears to improve the torque. Okay, so. Um, now we also talked about sturdy, yes? All right, it's coming. Um, we also talked about sturdy construction, right? If a piece of your robot falls off and falls off the table, you lose, all right? We also want a compact design. If your robot is huge, how easy is it to hit you? <laughs> Real easy, easy to find you and hit you. We also want to maybe use triple beat, triple pegs to put it together with. A wide base, you turn slowly, but you're more stable. Narrow base, fast turns. Which is your offset? Which is your, what's your, your key? Where do you win? Where do you lose? All right? So these are things that if you play, you may want to build different robot designs and test them against each other. Wheels. All right. Now, we have two tires. We could go with treads. We could go with multiple tires. Do we want plastic or rubber wheels? We want big or small. Do we put the wheels up front or in back? Um, you can also build a wheel that spins back here, but this little um, ball bearing thingy is probably the best back end because it turns very freely. <laughs> sensors, where do you place your sensors? Light sensors. Remember, they're looking for the amount of light that's reflected off the surface. So they need to be as close to the surface as possible for that light to reflect easily. If your light sensors are too high, the light doesn't reflect well. All right. Now, do you want them close to the middle or out to the side? Corners can be tricky. OK. Now, your sonar sensor. What would happen if you put your sonar sensor too high? Might not find your opponent. Your opponent has a real low stealthy robot. Your ultrasonic sensor looks right over them. All right? Um, we could have a touch sensor in the back to know when it's being touched. Or even another sensor up front. So while I'm touching something up front, I know I'm pushing either the opponent or the uh, bottle. So what do I want my power to be while I'm pushing? Where do I want my motor power to be while I'm pushing someone? Yeah. 100. 100, right? Yeah. All right. So you get a lot of stuff to think about as you play with your robot. OK. So now, some robots, we've got extra motor ports available, right? We have, what, four motor ports available on this robot. I could have a motor attached up front with a little flipper. So now I go under the opposing robot and flip them over. Now they're on their back and they're real easy to push off. Very little friction, right? Easy to push off and they can't fight back. Um, so we could attack her. Now one rule we have is in RoboFest, <coughs> if you do have a flapping arm, it cannot purposefully damage the other person's robot. These things are expensive. We don't, yeah, you can't have like an iron spike going, ah, right? Oh, oh. <laughs> All right. So, 